Neil from Essex here to talk you through some of the techniques that you use in order to put an attachment onto a three-point hitch. We're gonna walk through and show you how you manipulate these different pieces to get your implement on the machine, and also show you some of the common frustration points that I run in when talking customers through this process. Essex, a helping hand with your land. So the three-point hitch. <laughs> There's a lot of things back here to kind of like marvel at a little bit. Um, in the, the tractor industry, there's a handful of things on our machines that have become kind of de facto standard equipment over the years. And regardless of what brand tractor you're looking at, the pieces look the same. And that is namely the three-point hitch. Uh, the, the guts of these things kind of have been around the US here since about the 1940s. And while it's been great and it's a universal system and we like it for those reasons, uh, being that old, it has its quirks and isn't necessarily have say some of the ease of use that we might want out of modern equipment. Um, but that said, this is what we find in the back of all of our tractors. Now we're gonna start with some terminology here because there's a lot of verbiage that's used when describing all of these pieces. Uh, very simply here, the top point of your three-point hitch is called your top link, and this can be turned in and out on basically every top link in order to adjust your implement in this direction. Say if you have a rotary cutter, it's gonna bring the back of that implement up and down. Working over here to the side, these are called your rock shabs that lift from your tractor, and they're attached to two lift arms. Uh, this is a ratcheting lift link over here on the side. Uh, many tractors, you're gonna find a turnbuckle in here, and these adjustments here on your lift links are going to allow you to make a left or right adjustment here to have one of these arms higher or lower. Those are attached here to the lower links that have these ball ends on them. And these balls are gonna slide over top of the pins on your implement. Now these balls are done in categories, from category zero to category three, depending on the size of your attachments and the size of your tractors. Most all of your tractors under 60 horsepower are gonna be category one. When you go from about 60 to 150 or so, you're often around category two. And then 150 and above, you get into category three and some big special ones for some high horsepower ag tractors. Uh, those are attached here on the inside to what's called a sway bar or a check chain here on the inside of the arms. We're gonna talk through these. They control whether the arms are gonna be able to swing back and forth or whether they're really tightened in place here behind your tractor. So understanding all of these pieces, let's talk through how you put them on to your implement. So the first thing that we're gonna do before we try to back the tractor up to the implement is first open up the three-point hitch arms so that they're wide and can go around the pins of the tractor. On our Kubota right here, we just pull the pins out here from the inside of these sway bars, pull the arms out, and drop the pins back in again into an available hole so that the arms are nice and wide and easy to get around our attachment. Now this is where we'll find our first frustration. Some of your tractors aren't gonna have these easy to adjust sway bars on the inside of them and will instead have a check chain or a turnbuckle in here that can be challenging to adjust, especially for something simple here where you're just trying to get these arms wide. Sometimes you'll see people do things like lift the arms up, back up to the implement and then kind of like push them out as you go down to try to get around them so that you're not having to make the adjustments down here with the annoying check chains and turnbuckles. Uh, but these sway bars do make this process much easier. Unfortunately, if you have one of those styles, there's not much of a cheat in here other than to like push these things open and back really fast or try to kind of muscle them around your implement a little bit. Most of our tractors here in about the last decade or so will have options back here. If you bought a standard series or more of an economy oriented tractor, you might not have these nice adjustments. Many times we can buy optional kits for your tractors in order to upgrade these pieces. If you're taking implements on and off a lot, I think it's a worthwhile investment. Just like we're moving our lower three-point arms out of the way, we wanna move our top link out of the way too. Uh, most of us, if you're lazy like myself, tend to let this thing kinda bounce around back here. Uh, but most of your tractors are gonna have some kind of top link holder that are gonna lock this thing up and out of the way. And it's worth moving up here before backing up to your implement so that it stays above your implement. Now, if you let this thing down when you back in, it's usually pretty easy to pull the pins back here and move some things around to get it back into a place again. But taking 10 seconds here probably eliminates a step when you back the tractor up. Now that we've backed up here to our implement, we need to get the ball over top of the pin. And there's a 
couple things here to talk about. You can see here when I back up to this, these things lined up pretty well. This is an appropriately sized implement for this tractor, but you're gonna have some implements where these pins are too low or too high and feel outside the range of your three-point hitch arm. If that happens, oftentimes there's adjustments further back on your three-point hitch arm that you can move these lift links to change the range of motion and how low or high off the ground these arms are going to want to sit. So. I have, for example, a flail mower where my pins are only about eight or 10 inches off the ground. And so I have an adjustment made back here that allows my ball ends to get that low. Now, once we're close here, I'm gonna reach back here to my three-point hitch, pull out the pins from my sway bar, and then lift this up and slide this over the end. Now you see here, I'm a little bit off, and this is where we've got options to talk about again. Uh, this deluxe tractor here has an extendable link arm on that I can push this plate down and pull the ball end out so that when I lift here in order to go over top of the pin, I have a little bit of flexibility. Many of our tractors do not have this extendable arm on it, and so what do we do? We get it close, and you take your boot, and oftentimes you're gonna pound in order to get that over top. And this kind of pounding <laughs> is totally normal on your three point. Um, I'll tell you on a lot of other places on your tractor, when you're working with loaders and skid steer couplers and backhoes, you often don't have to manhandle your machine, right? Wiggling things into the right place, using the tractor's hydraulics gives you all the force that you need in order to put attachments on. But an old school three point hitch isn't quite that easy, right? You don't have that hydraulic assist. So doing things like using the boot in order to get the pins over top of the balls is totally normal. So getting the first side on usually goes pretty easy, but when you come over to the other side, you're almost always going to find things are not perfect. Um, in this case, my implement is too close to my tractor. And so I got a couple of options here, right? I could push my implement around in order to try to get these lined up better, but I'm gonna take the smart route and drive my tractor forward about two inches in order to drag that link forward and start to line things up. I often find cases too where I'm dealing with height differences here. Again, too high, too low, in which case we can move around this arm right here to make an adjustment to get things in range, or I get smart over time and say, before I take an attachment off, throw a piece of firewood or skid under it or something so that it's sitting at the right height when I go to put it back on the next time. We're just gonna do more kicking. So now with the lower links attached here, we need to do one of two options. We need the top link to get done or the PTO shaft to get done. Oftentimes, I'm gonna to try to do the PTO shaft first because it's easier to get in here and work with the top link not attached. Now getting this PTO shaft attached can be a headache in and of itself. It, it seems like this thing never is sitting exactly where you want it to be. If your implement is allowing the shaft to like lay on the ground or something, if you've gone through all of these steps and left the shaft low, you're probably gonna struggle in order to pull it up at this point because it's gonna hit the tractor or the sway bars here when you lift it up. Land Pride is nice enough here to give us this J-shaped hook that holds it in place. Um, or I often find myself using the uh, chains that are on these shafts. There's a chain that's usually attached to one side or the other that can be clipped onto your tractor to keep the shielding from spinning around. I often will take that chain and attach it up here onto my top link somewhere to hold this shaft up in the air, basically in line with my tractor so that when I back up to it, it's already in the right spot. So again, this is something you wanna think ahead on because it'll save you some headaches later. Now these are done one of two different ways when it comes to putting it on the tractor. There's some PTO shafts are gonna have a button that you push on that that releases it so that it can slide onto the tractor or a collar that you pull back in order to release it. Now you don't have to push the button or the collar right away. You're able to take this shaft and slide it onto the back of your tractor and get it started before you have to do anything. Um, and usually I'm gonna line up the splining here and give the shaft a little bit of a spin. And as it turns, I'm just gonna push it on. And then there's a point right there where the splining lines up. I can start to get it wiggled onto the back of the tractor, reach in here and pushing the button here that unlocks it will then allow me to get it on the rest of the way. And I'll continue to jiggle it forward. Now this is especially challenging if you have the version that has the collar that you pull back. There we go, and it locked. Because you need to pull that release collar back and push 
at the same time. And when you do that, you only need to move it a small amount to open up the ball bearings and get them over top of the notch that's on the PTO shaft back here, but it is a challenging motion to do. Now that we have the PTO shaft on, we're gonna attach our top link. So I'm just gonna bop it out of the holder here, and you'll see that the hole that I need it to be in is quite a bit further away than what my tractor is. These top links, you just sit here and turn, and as you turn them, they're going to extend. And it goes pretty quickly because as you turn the center barrel, it's threading from both ends. And so we'll just continue to stretch this guy out until I can get my top link pin in place. Now, once that pins it, it's gonna go on with one of these little clevis things. You wanna watch these because they'll bust your knuckles up. Uh, there are only a couple of cents to pick these up in the parts department. And these are one of those things that you wanna have a dozen of them floating around your tractor because they're easy to lose. and. You never seem to have one when you need it. So now I have everything attached, I'm not actually ready to go to work yet. It's really tempting to jump in the seat and go to town at this point, but I got a couple more things that you kind of want to think through. First is the sway bars, your check chains down here on the bottom. Uh, right now, my implement floats left to right. See how I can swing my mower around? Uh, different implements kind of call for different adjustments back here. You want to take a minute and think through how you're using that implement. When I'm running a rotary cutter, I tend to like this to be able to sway a little bit because if I hit a rock or a tree or something, I want the mower to be able to swing out of the way. So when I go through and put my pins in, I'm gonna use the large notched hole in my sway bar to allow this thing to continue to have some range of motion. Your check chains are gonna be much the same way. You're just gonna leave those a little relaxed. So if the thing really swings, they grab it, but it moves a little bit. Conversely, if you were using something that you wanted to be rigid back here, say I use a fertilizer spreader a lot, and I don't want my fertilizer spreader slopping around on the back of my tractor as I'm trucking around, so I might use a hole back here that's gonna keep this from swinging back and forth or tighten those check chains down so they don't move. I also have an adjustment to make up here on my top link. You'll see when you look at my mower, how it's really sitting this way right now. By sitting here and turning this upper link, I can extend my top link and lower the back wheel on my cutter. Now, when you're setting up things like mowers, usually you want them slided forward just a little bit while they're cutting. They tend to cut the best that way, but you might be using something like a box blade or a rear grading blade that you want to be exactly flat, and so you might make that adjustment a little bit differently. But by sitting here and turning this top link, we're gonna level that mower out. I also have an adjustment over here on my side link. If I was using something like a rear blade and I wanted to crown a road, I might shorten or lengthen this up here to be able to change my adjustment from left to right. So that's a little bit on taking an implement on and off the back of your tractor. Uh, this is a process that is frequently frustrating if you're new to this equipment. Slowing down, thinking through what you're doing, making sure things are in the right place goes a really long way to getting things on and off your machine quickly. There's been some innovation in this space over the years, right? This is an 80 year old standard, but things like sway bars and three point quick hitches and extendable link arms and ratcheting adjustments have made things a little bit easier over the years. And if you pop in your local dealership here at Messix, we would have some of these things if you're taking stuff on and off a lot that might improve your quality of life a little bit because there's some tools back here that make things a little bit easier. So if you're shopping for a piece of equipment and we can help, or if you need parts of service for a machine you've already got, give us a call. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at messix.com.